call to order the meeting public works. Um, start out with roll call. Alder Person Ackley is here. Um, let's see who's else online. Alder Person Phillips. Uh, she's, she's, she's on. Yeah, she's here. Like we're having weird audio issues on our end for calling in. You guys only had phone call in audio only. Yeah. Okay. But Rose is here, Ryan's here, and Marcus is here. Okay, we're all here. All righty. Well, then we'll start out with Rose. Rose, can you hear us? Sheesh. I don't think she can hear us, though. No, I don't think she can. Rose, give us a thumbs up. I don't think she's... It's not a thumbs up. Okay. Um, can, can someone fix the audio settings for this meeting so that way we can just do this normally? Yeah, we're trying. We're in the midst. <laughs> okay, cool. It is a 2020 meeting, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Rose, can you hear us now? I don't see her. Hold on. Marcus. Marcus, can you hear us? You're muted. He's muted. He's muted. So I'm All right, so the mute function on this thing works still, so even Marcus though I'm talking through my phone. But yes, I can hear you guys. You you can hear us? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then we'll continue on with the meeting. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Okay. Start out with the approval of minutes 2.1. Move for approval. Ryan. Second, Marcus. Moved by Brian, second by Marcus. All, uh, any other discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Uh, any any opposition? Motion passes. Minutes approved. 3.1. Resolution number 134, 2021, December 15, 2020. Direct referral. Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to accept the quote from Ovivo USA LLC for the purchase of the components required to maintain the West Influence screens at the wastewater treatment plant and to make other expenditures related to the maintenance of the West Influence screen and the control of the East and West Influence screens. David. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, this project, as you is just indicated, this is at the front end of the plant. So okay. as the sewage is coming into the plant, we have screening uh, mechanisms there to take out debris out of the wastewater that would, if it continued into the plant, could affect pumps and other off, uh, processes. Uh, Steve Jossert, our wastewater superintendent, is on this evening, and I'll let him give a much more detailed explanation for the need of this project. Okay. So um, we had a, a failure here this fall. We, we knew the chains were worn, but we thought we could keep the screens running a few more years. But uh, we had a shift of the sprockets that drive the chains, and it caused quite a bit of damage to the chain on the west screen. So we we got the, the sprockets and everything rebuilt. But the chain, we're, we're, we've got it set, we can run it as an emergency, but uh, we really don't think it'll last very long if we 
don't replace the chain now. So um, <clears throat> what we're looking to do is is replace the chain and redo the controls. And the reason to redo the controls is to try and minimize how much these screens run. Right now, they they run continuously. They also will run off level control, but they run almost continuously when they're on that. So we want to put in a little more sophisticated control system to minimize the wear of these chains because they're very expensive. And hopefully we can uh, double the life on them with some creative uh, controls that we can minimize how much they run. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, Mr. Fair, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, the cost of adding the uh, sophisticated control uh, versus the cost of replacing the chain themselves, could you kind of give me a breakdown of what this new controller is going to cost? Yeah, the control consists of some levels. There are some levels, and it's bringing it all into the PLC. And then it brings it into our SCADA system, which is um, our, our operator interface. And what it allows us to do is trend the data on how the levels and flows affect the screen so that we can really minimize how much they run. So now the cost of this chain, which is... Uh, over $60,000, that for one screen, we have two of them, and probably a, next year or the year after, we're going to have to place, replace the other chain. So <clears throat> it's about $30,000, but if we're able to, uh, and what we're thinking we can do is double the life of the chain, because we believe most of the time we can get by with one screen, um, we might be able to double the life of them, so we we think it's a pretty good trade-off and a good way to extend the life of this equipment. Awesome. I'm, I really like that you guys are being um, being proactive and trying to extend the life of these things. I guess um, I, I didn't ask my question, though, very specifically. I'm looking through the quote, and it looks like there's about fifty to $60,000 worth of small like of, of items in here. None of them look like a, a piece of technology. They all look like, like neoprene and like chains themselves. So is there another quote coming for the um, the technology piece of this, or is that included in this $60,000 quote? No, that's not included, Mark. That, um, we're going to do that in-house. So we, have, we know what the level transmitters cost because we use those uh, around the facility for all kinds of things. So we just put a little internal estimate together um, for those costs. Awesome. Thank you. Are there any other questions on it? I'll move for approval. Second. Motion has been made by Ryan, seconded by Marcus. Uh, any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. All righty. Going to... We got it there. A little easier. 3.2 RC number 187 2021 report to committee to whom was referred RO number 97 2021 by city clerk submitting a communication from Michael Thomas, president of the Black American Community Outreach regarding Juneteenth celebration. Recommends the Common Council instruct staff to prepare the appropriate document to waive the park rental fee for the Juneteenth celebration. Uh, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since the, the last time we've had some staff, uh, particularly Joe Curlin, our superintendent of parks and forestry, and, and Don Sokolowski from the business office, have reached out and had a meeting, actually, uh, to kind of go over the park rental process, the fees, and some of the equipment rentals so we could get a better, better idea of the type of event and type of area and uh, what they're going to need. So I'm going to let Joe give kind of an update on that and let him talk on this. Thank you. Okay. Joe, are you online? Yeah, 
<laughs> then I'm going to, uh, well, like, you know, we had a meeting, um, and uh, basically, you know, we at first it was just, you know, it's going to be a one-day event. Yes. How, however, they're, they're typically with these types of events, they're, there's they're set up. Uh, if there's going to be a tent, we usually have to t- put the tent up a day before. And then after the event, it's another day to take down the tent and clean up. So instead of just a one-day park rental, it ends up, for the larger type of events, it's multi-day that we reserve the parks. We do this for Brat Days. We do it for the Greek Fest. We do it for uh, the Hmong Fest, um, all sorts of larger festivals, I'm I'm, I'm trying to give a background here. So after we t- started talking about that, it, it, it instead of just a one-day $500 roughly cost uh, that we would waive, it's more around $1,650. And I just want to be, we, we want to be transparent, want to be upfront with that. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, my understanding is that they're, they're a nonprofit. Which is you know what we use for other other nonprofits as well, and uh, I believe we have representation this evening, and you know I would kind of defer to to the representation here to get some more information, and um, you know if we want to do this, this is fine. We're we're well prepared to to accommodate this. We have the the dates. Is my understanding the dates are are being held for the event. And we're all ready. We just need a decision from from the committee to authorize the waiving of the fees. So okay. if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman, if you would like to entertain. Sure, the absolutely. If you could just state your name for record for the. My name is Tony White, and I am the administrator um, that's associated with the Black American Com- Community Outreach Organization. Um, which means that I coordinated um, a lot of the activities that went over that we did over the summer in partnership with the Milwaukee, I mean the Sheboygan Police Department. Um, the celebration is really designed to educate, aware, and engage the community in understanding more about um, Black Americans in the Sheboygan uh, community. Okay. Um, and then also, um, I am a resident in Sheboygan. Okay. Um, I moved here when I was 11. My family has been here for 36 years. So I think these events are helpful. They're designed to try to do what we can for the youth and the families to help support. But, like, we don't know each other, so it's another (laughs) engaging. And then how do we start to um, transform some of the things that people think about Black Americans in this community? So we're trying to do what we can to be engaging Um, educating um, and trying to build up the courage and confidence in a lot of our young people. Sheboygan is a wonderful place to live. Um, And I think that people don't appreciate the value that they have, but I think it's a twofold education um, opportunity. Um, I know people had questions. I'm here to, we were recently um, determined a 501c3. So that was within the last probably 90 days. As the administrator, too, my job is to write for grants, so I'm seeking grant opportunities and partnering with Boys and Girls Club and um, Big Brothers Big Sisters, trying to figure out how we can do. We, you know, we're in these unprecedented times. Uh-huh. We're not really sure what June may bring, but <laughs> to be outside and to be able to um, still carry out something of this magnitude in the community would would be a good thing. So. Okay. Um, that is what I'm here to talk about. So if anybody has any questions, the type of activities is really around um, athletics. We're going to do some athletic activities. We're going to do some um, educating about Juneteenth. What does it stand for? What is it about? Why is it important um, for black Americans? And then also um, looking at ways in which to bring the value that black Americans bring to. So vendors, um, just trying to figure out what that all looks like, we have a meeting scheduled at the beginning of the year um, after we kind of find out where we are with this decision as to how we're going to move forward. Definitely looking for um, opportunities to support our cause, generally speaking. Um, I have uh, eight plus years of coordinating Juneteenth events. I actually work in Milwaukee. Um, 
And so they have a Juneteenth celebration every year, and I've been part of that as my professional job as the director of workforce programs. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I guess I'll start with the one. Um, do you, have you been looking for like um, area sponsorship, like you know, businesses and things like that, or have you been, been have you contacted some of them for for you know to help he, defer your costs and things too? Just yes. So um, with that, it's just about the sponsorship pieces and what do we um, we have to put together our sponsorship levels. Okay. Um, so that part has started. I started that piece of it. I think it's just a matter of trying to secure the date and the place. Um, it's hard to get people on board mm -hmm. if you can't yeah. solidify mm -hmm. the type of work plan you're going to have or okay. the type of sponsorships that you want them to sponsor. Um, so it just was about, is it possible? And if so, we will move forward with trying to secure sponsorships. Okay. Um, I guess my only comment, I, 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 I guess I'm, I would not be of a problem with doing it, like you know, granting it possibly for for like a one year thing, is you know. But mm -hmm. um, in the future, it would probably not because we have other organizations, mm -hmm. you know, nonprofits, Hmong Association, and things like that, and we can't fairly do it know, for everybody. So I understand, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I guess that that would be my comment on towards it. I mean, I I, I, I think it's a great to give you guys, you know, a, a start, you know. To, you know, and I would be, I would support mm -hmm. for you know a one year type of thing, but uh, just so that that that's clear. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's my comp, my questions. Does anyone else have questions? Okay, Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Yes, go ahead, Marcus. Thank you. I uh, I'm really excited to see a new event coming to Kiwanis Park. Um, I think uh, celebrating Juneteenth Day is going to be a great thing for Sheboyganites to learn about. And I actually have a question that's more likely going to be directed at, uh, at, at our public works director. Um, do we charge the United Way to use Houghton Park when they have their uh, fundraiser? And do we charge the police department when they put on their uh, community outreach event? Oh, sorry. That's you. Okay. <laughs> if, if it's for the police department, no. But other, other nonprofits, we do. So if the United Way has an event or, uh, as I mentioned, um, there's some other nonprofits. So we have numerous nonprofit agencies that uh, put on special events that are, are, are also a fundraiser and awareness. And uh, I think as the, the chairman is, has recognized is that since this is a new event, I think it would be appropriate for, you know, to waive the fee as kind of an initiative to help and get this established. And a lot of the events is when they ra raise the money, they know that these are going to be, you know, expenses for the next year that they've kind of cover with their, with their, with their event. Uh, then, com you know, comes along with uh, the sponsorship opportunities, uh, you know, the JCs and their Bratwurst Day, they, you know, they give tremendous amount of their proceeds back to the community. But yet we still charge them for the use of the park and the wear and tear and, and, and so forth to cover some of the, the city costs in, in terms of, of hosting that. So uh, I, I, I think that this is appropriate and... Um, I think it, it's it's a great start for something new in our community. Thank you, Mr. Beagle. Um, I, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to approve this. I'll second. Okay, motion made by Marcus's. Marcus seconded by Betty. Uh, oh. Alder, Alder person Decker. Yes, go ahead. Can, can I clarify um, Alder Person Tavaglio's motion? <laughs> so we, we had a, a motion to approve. What what are we approving? Uh, the motion would be uh, to approve the um, staff to prepare the appropriate document to waive the park rental fee for the Juneteenth Day celebration for 2021. Okay, so to, to clarify and to try to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So because the park rental fee is set by ordinance and because there's no mechanism for, um, for a waiver in that ordinance, uh, that would mean there would be an ordinance prepared to, to waive the fee. Generally, uh, we try to do ordinances in a sort of a general way 
um, something that would uh, potentially create a, a mechanism for waivers going forward rather than a, a one-off ordinance to approve this, um, this particular rental. Um, you can do an ordinance to approve just a, a single uh, exception, but that, that's not the, the preferred drafting sort of mechanism, if you, if you will. Um, so is, is it possible to get a little bit of clarification on what the, what the desired direction is, at least from, for the motion? And I, right, I recognize that the, the motion hasn't been voted on yet. I guess if I could add some more clarity here to what I am motioning, uh, it would be that we would create a mechanism to allow for this to happen in the ordinance um, and then direct staff to execute that motion for this group for this coming year. I think, I think we can, oh, we can hold on one second. Up. Hold on yeah. one second. Uh, uh, Mike, go ahead. Go ahead. Mayor's going to come up as a, as a statement on this. Thomas, I understand we're getting stuck in the legalese a little bit on this. Uh, is it mm -hmm. possible to in, inst instruct the uh, department to refund the fees after the event? Would that uh, take care of the ordinance problem? Thomas? Do I, do, I, do I see a hand from Director Beeble over your shoulder? Yes. Okay. We, we, we could simply, for, so that if there's other requests like this in the future, instead of having a carve out in the ordinance for a specific event, we could have just language adopted that the upon the Public Works Committee approval, the Director of Public Works has the ability to waive the fees. Yes. Something of that, something generic like that. That if there's any other requests from other uh, organizations that uh, need to get a start or they need a, a chance to waive the fees, they could make their case to the committee. The committee would, though, you know, could approve it, and then based on your approval, I could be the authorized representative then to waive the fees. If, I think the language could be accommodated generally in the ordinance to uh, allow that. I think that would solve the problem. I, I would hope that that was the mechanism that I was uh, authorizing you to to do in my uh, motion. That, that, that's what I was imagining in the um, in the motion. Um, in terms of could it be done in other ways? I think you know there there could be a mechanism to um, to instruct refunding or or something to that sort. Um, you know that that may well be an, an option as well. So we go along with this is the, the the motion from Marcus is to create a mechanism for the, that that we direct the public director of public works. Is that correct? Is that how we're going to, going to put that, that how the motion is going forward? All right. Yes. Okay. Thomas, is that satisfactory? Yes. Okay. And my second still stands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Betty has seconded. Do we have any other discussion on this matter? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Now on to 3.3. .3. Resolution adopting the Sheboygan County Hazard Mitigation Plan 2020 to 2025. Director. I hope you all had a chance to read this thoroughly <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to go through this in detail this evening. No, this no, I'm it. not. <laughs> no, I'm not. But okay, good. <laughs> this has been gone through exhaustively with numerous partners through the county as well as the city. This is a necessary document that is required for any type of emergency funding through FEMA as well as Wisconsin State of Emergency Management who is the agency that would handle any of that. 
Okay. And it's very important. It's it's due for an update, and it's timely, and that's why we're we're actually going to be approving it before the county actually adopts it because we're actually going for a FEMA grant for some of the lakeshore erosion, especially for our sanitary sewer interceptor project that um, is needed. Okay. So, real quickly, it's a planning document. It identifies all hazards in terms of natural types of hazards that could be uh, affecting the area. That could be anything from flooding, heat waves, blizzards, uh, you name it. So uh, it's, it's comprehensive. It's very detailed. And I said, it has a tremendous amount of agencies. You have fire department personnel, health, health and human resources, planning uh, representatives, public works representatives, and it's throughout the county. The cities, uh, uh, we used to have our own plan because we were kind of ahead of it after the 1998 flood. Mm -hmm. But since then, we've been able to merge both our documents and have it as a countywide plan. And uh, so um, it's, it's, again, this is an update. We have one existing. So basically what we're asking for is this resolution before you tonight would be adopting the plan. Uh, the county will still need to adopt it as well. But uh, it, once it's adopted, we're immediately able to then apply for these FEMA funds that are available, and the, and the deadline to apply is coming up in, in January. So that's the urgency to get this document planned. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Move to accept the plan. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, any other discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes, Chair votes aye. We are approved on that. All righty. General Ordinance number 28-2021. Ordinance document 7.3. Wrong one. Um, sorry, document 7.2. Ordinance amending sections 122 to 403 and 122 to 404 and 122 405 of the municipal code relating to sewers and sewage disposal as to make changes to service charges. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am going again to defer to Mr. Steve Jassert this evening uh, at Wastewater. This is about the basically ordinance basically matching uh, what our rates are going to be okay. for uh, for, for, for the sanitary sewer charges okay. that were passed along with the budget. But I'll let, I'll let Steve explain a little bit more detail. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, so our rates are going to go up a little bit. There's really three main drivers for it. Uh, number one, the, the Lakeshore Interceptor, we are budgeting um, $475,000 to do the engineering to get that prepared to protect all the manholes and build a roadway in there. So that's a pretty big chunk of an additional project that we probably normally wouldn't, wouldn't be doing. Um, another major cause is our billing through the water utility has gone up significantly uh, the last few years. Uh, we were paying about $500,000 a year to have them uh, put out our billing for the sewer charges, and that's up to 650000 now, so about 150000 125000 I believe, more in this year's budget than what I had last year. And the reasoning for that is they've gone to all these automated readers, and we're required to pay 50% of the cost, as well as all the depreciation, 50% of the depreciation, whatever is charged to meet a reading, we pay 50% of. So those are the two main reasons. And then the way the rate tool works, um, the last two years, our flow is up probably 15%. So that's driven some of our chemical usages up a little bit. So it's starting to take that into account. Um, normally our flows are around 11 million. Uh, the last two years, we've been over 12 and a half million on average. So those are the drivers behind it. Thank you, Steve. Anyone have any discussion on this at all? I've got a question. Just go ahead, Marcus. Thank you, Steve. When it comes to flow, 
Um, do you think the additional million or so um, gallons, was it, that you're pumping through has to do with more usage from people, or is it water getting into the system? What, what's causing this to jump? It, it's the uh, stormwater, groundwater infiltration in the sewers market. With, uh, we've had a lot of precipitation the last two years, and that, that's the main driver. And this may be a little bit off topic, but are you are there plans in place to start to tackle that so we don't get even more out of control? Um, yeah, David's been putting money aside every year to realign sewers. Uh, like this year, we inspected that that interceptor along the lake, which is was built in the 30s. You know, we figured there could be some problems there. Fortunately, the sewer's in good shape. Just some of the manholes need some work, and we need to protect them long term from ice shoves and things. But yeah, there's as sewers are identified um, when they do road projects, and, and David can speak to this better than I can. But typically, they'll take care of those issues as as they do road projects. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motions by Marcus, seconded by Ryan. Yeah, any other discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. All righty. And let's see then. 3.5, General Ordinance 28-2021, Document 7.3, Ordinance reestablishing the bulkhead line along the north side of the Sheboygan River in the city of Sheboygan. Chad. Thank you, Chair. So... You'll recall we were here uh, before this committee probably about a year ago. It was right around yeah. Christmas last mm -hmm. year where we talked about establishing this bulkhead line along the, uh, the lakefront. We did the first plan, um, which was a conservative plan to um, kind of establish where this line was going to be. We came to committee. I remember Todd Wolf was the alderman at the time and said, you know, why aren't we going out to the, you know, the, the most, you know, the line that's there today. So we yes. re-engineered that, um, and and the council approved an ordinance for that. We sent that off to the mm -hmm. DNR, and after multiple discussions between the city attorney and myself with the DNR, it came to be that the DNR doesn't feel we need a bulkhead line along the lakefront, that they feel that that's covered under public trust as part of the lake bed grant area. Um, but there was nothing established on the north side of the river, primarily from the former Briscoe to the Coast Guard Station. So given that the city has a public promenade along that area that's held up by a steel sheet pile wall, um, the decision was made to uh, have the engineer redesign and, and re-legally describe that area with a six-foot offset of the wall so that if we ever had to come in in the future and do any kind of maintenance, we had the capability of doing that and we wouldn't have to go to the DNR for additional permits. So that's kind of where we're at with this thing as we, um, they feel that everything along the lakefront is uh, covered under a public document already and that this is the only piece that's really not described as a bulkhead and that was their recommendation to move forward with. So that's what's before you today is to look at uh, this area basically from Briscoe to the Coast Guard Station. Okay, that's just a, a, quite, a, quite, a significant, quite significantly less than what we originally had <laughs> in, anticipated. <laughs> It took them a lot. They, there was a lot of conversation back and forth it's with their attorneys and with our attorneys and try to understand what needs to happen because this is kind of uncharted territory where a lot of this isn't documented from years and years ago back into the 1880s. So um, they felt that was the best moving forward. And Chuck and I talked about it and said, let's get that established. At least that helps di differentiate because at one time the river came out someplace there, okay. and this would, <clears throat> it, when the river was moved, this would clear up some of those issues as well. Okay, makes sense. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Sure. Go ahead, Marcus. 
Thank you. Chad, is this a time sensitive issue? Um, I don't know if it's time sensitive. I mean, staff has worked on this for a year, so I don't know how time sensitive <laughs> it is. Um, ideally, if the council approves the ordinance, we would, you know, resubmit it to the DNR. They're kind of on hold until they see this. The reason I ask, uh, we may need to get uh, Attorney Cameron's uh, point of view on this. I'm looking at the board docs, and the ordinance that's listed is the one for the sewer, not for the bulkhead um, in 3.5. I can't find it anywhere other in this document, so I can't see it. Huh. Does that cause a problem for us, or can we continue to move forward? It's... Yeah, and it looks like the IFC is also the one for the um, for GO 27 2021. Ironically, it looks like the IFC for the bulkhead line got attached to the other GO. Um, I would say the, the most conservative course of action from a uh, public meeting perspective would be to not take any action today um, and then to come back at the next meeting and approve it with it uh, with it properly attached. Okay. That's not a problem. We've been at this for a year, so what's two more weeks? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to hold it. Betty's make a, made a motion to hold. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Marcus. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion's granted to hold. Okay, and 3.6 um, Riverfront marine, mar, Marina fee discussion, discussion only. Director? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this, this is just for discussion only because we want some direction from uh, the Public Works Committee. We, we have had, um, since 2006, it's via, via council resolution that the riverfront boat slips, that's the slips that are along the riverfront, not in the Harbor Center Marina. We manage them through the Public Works Office. And the resolution basically states it's to be, the fees are supposed to increase 5% every year. Um, and uh, we, we have used that proceeds and th those monies to actually, you know, replace those docks. We just completed it probably about two years ago. We're now completely all modernized with new docks. However, you know, this last year, it, it was a, a difficult year. We, we were only able to put half the docks in because of the high water level. The, the, what I would call the west and the north side of the Sheboygan River, the, where they get attached to the, to the seawall, mm -hmm. they, they, they were unable to be installed. So along with that, we had to relocate a bunch of boaters and accommodate. Some actually shifted to the marina, but it, 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 it's, a, it's a point of contention and, and somewhat I, I, I agree with them is that, hey, you know, this is just every year it goes on and on. Is, is it going to stop? Can we have a reprieve for a year where we don't have to have a 5% increase? Well, that's, you know, I can't make that decision. And if we do that, and that's why I'm bringing it to the, the board this evening, is if we would waive that fee, we would have to then also then have, have our city attorney, you know, have the right language to allow us to do that. We just can't arbitrarily just say, okay, no fees no. for 2021. So, you know, several of them are, are charter captains uh, in the COVID situation. They, 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 they've, 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 they've had some setback and, and suffering. Uh, again, there, there's a t total of 92 slips that, we, that are available to lease, uh, 44 on the, what I would say on the north side, and then 40, 48 on the south side. The 48 were the ones that we were able to to accommodate. There were six leases that relocated to the 
to the marina last year and eight relocated to the south side. So we weren't able to capture everyone and accommodate. And some just said, uh, given the cir circumstances, I'm not going to even bother with my boat this year. Uh, it's been very difficult to compare and contrast because not, not every community has riverfront slips. They have marinas, and our Harbor Center Marina is competitive in terms of their, their, their slip rental. And, and ours are somewhat cheaper, but we don't have nearly, we don't have the amenities that a marina has. It's just basically power and water. Um, and it, it's really kind of nice because it, it, it puts more of those active boaters, the charter fishermen, along the river. Uh, they're er out early in the morning. Uh, it's, it, it would be somewhat of a conflict of use and interest with the marina clientele, I would say, mm -hmm. for lack of a better uh, example. So uh, given that, and I know Dawn's put a lot of work into this, and, and Mike, they, they've, they've spent a tremendous amount of time this summer along the lakefront or the riverfront area. We've had the high water. It was, we had to shut down the boardwalk. It was impassable. We tried to clean and then it would just get over, overwhelmed again. Um, and, and these two in our office probably got the brunt of, of the, uh, what I would say, complaints and, and, and requests. Um, just real quickly, revenues collected in, in this year was 43,000 and, and in, in 19, it was 53. So it was only, even though given all those circumstances, uh, it was about 10,000 less than we would normally recover from those fees. Uh, I, I, it would be my rec or at least my recommendation that at least for the 2021 season, that now we're sending out the leases for this summer. Uh, I would like to say we're going to, because of the circumstances of this past summer, we, we recommend that we're going to hold the prices to the 2020 level. And if uh, the committee would so agree with that recommendation, and I think we need some type of uh, direction towards this, the city attorney's office to draft that proper document. Any well, questions? Any uh I guess I would say is if would, with the circumstances the way they are um, to help all these these charter boats are uh, a vital vital to our to our economy as far as uh, our tourism and things like that and anything we can do to help them out as long without significantly you know which the five percent increase for holding off for a year I, I would have no problem with it uh, I don't know how the rest of the committee feels. Um, if, if anybody wants to chime in, go right ahead. Uh, I've got a couple of questions that uh, people might be able to answer here. Uh, what is the cost per split? How, how would, like, is it a seasonal rental and then it's a uh, cost per month or do they pay all up front? What, what's the cost? It, for, for it, there's two, two different pricing for a charter uh, operation, a charter boat. It's $2,033, for, and that's for the season, roughly May through October. And then a pleasure boat, which would be, you know, if you're not a charter captain, you're not operating a, a charter business, it's $1,781. Thank you. And then um, as far as the cost to operate, um, how much do you see those rise every year? Uh, it's it's fairly minimal. Uh, we we have a contract that we contract to install and remove, and I believe that was the same as that, that. Those prices have been the same the last two years, and we haven't gotten a quote this year. So that that that's pretty much the bulk of the costs. Uh, it, you know, utilities are are very minimal. Uh, for the electrical usage and water usage is very minimal too. Um, so it, it would mainly be the contractor that is installed and removed the docks. And I, in the last two years, it's been flat. It hasn't been raised. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, my opinion on this would be that we either tie it to like a CPI increase um, in, in some sort of document or tie it to the actual cost increase that we have uh, to, to, to operate um, the, the slips. 
Um, but I mean, I, I get 2021 being a tough time and all, um, but I, I think just a random 5% increase every year is not the right way to take care of our residents and citizens. Uh, yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't speak to, I think the part of the rationale back in the day was the, they knew over time that money would need to be built up to re eventually replace the docks. And that's why it was set at the 5%. And, and actually back in probably 06, inflation and cost of living was a little bit higher than it is today. Nevertheless, we do have several um, fees that we will establish a fee and, and then we review it after maybe a three-year period and say, okay, now we've looked at the cost, they've, they've, they've gone up and then we readjust it. So it's not an every year increase, it's an increase every other year or every three to five years, for instance, when there's a, a comprehensive review of the actual costs. Um, but the, 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 I'll have to say the 5% the annual increase, I mean, it makes it pretty easy. We're not having to do calculations and look at our costs and what is the CPI and uh, the additional what I would say revenue that was earned above and beyond the cost of uh, the CPI consumer price indexing still stayed within the, the boat. This is, a, this is a segregated fund. This does not go back to the general fund. So the funds earned in this account stay in this account for these facilities, either be it water line replacement or electrical hookups or, or new docks, for instance. So that, that's another, an, another advantage of it. So I, again, I, I'm only advocating this for the 2020 one year. Uh, I, I, again, I would not he hesitate or uh, to, to have this re-evaluated re, re or reactivated in 2022's uh, budget year. Yes, my other, my question that I just had with, with this, this fund is, is fairly healthy then I would imagine it's, 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 it's well it, 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 it was I mean we're, we're, we're low now because yeah. we just spent you know over a hundred thousand dollars of that revenue over the years that was built up on the dock replacement okay. we, it, we have some money in there but we are experiencing with the high water yeah we're, we're experiencing some erosion behind the seawall mm -hmm. and now we have just got a quote from the contractor that's doing the self pier, Michael's Construction, okay. they want to bring in a dive team because they feel that on that side, the north side, the, or the west side, mm -hmm. what I would call, it is has potentially maybe some failures and the seawall could be compromised. Uh, we're hoping that's not the case, but we'll have to probably send a diver in there to physically evaluate that and see how it can be fixed because, again, we can't have erosion on the other side of the boardwalk creating uh, holes and, and dangerous situations for, for pedestrians in that area. Okay. Chad, go ahead. Just to add a little bit on the tourism side of things. So the uh, room tax collections for 2020 are down about $400,000 uh, from last year, which is a pretty substantial amount. We keep 30% room tax, 70% goes to visit Sheboygan. Uh, in 2021, uh, Visit Sheboygan is estimating it to be flat as very similar to this year or less, even with a Ryder Cup and everything that's planned. Um, it's, it's, all of the hotels are, are budgeting to ne not see any increase next year. They're going to probably have to take the first two quarters of the year to build back up where we were and get people moving again. So I think it makes a lot of sense when you look at the fact that a lot of people coming in for charter fishing um, are staying in the hotels um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's going to be a slow, it's going to be a slow season for them to get back up running again, even if COVID was to end in the first 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 or second quarter of uh, 2021, I think it's just going to be that much slowness to get that momentum going again. Okay. And the, the last comment to David's point is the boat, boat Facilities Fund, if I recall, also takes the revenues from the boat launches and some of that funding has gone in the past to do improvements at the marina for the public boat launch and the A Street boat launch and those things as well. So um, as needs had arise, that's where some of the funding has come from. Okay. Thank you.
Any other discussion on this? Um, I would say I would direct uh, Thomas to uh, set up, create a document so that for the waiver of fees for the uh, 2021 year. That's my recommendation. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, is that how the rest of the committee feels? I don't want to speak for everyone. I agree. I think we need to be looking for the local businesses and business owners. Yes. So I would Hold on. Do we want to make the using the other boat thing free for the year, or do we want to not increase the price for a year? Just not increase the price for the year. This would be just to, 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 to waive the, the increase for the year. I'm sorry, I, I, I misspoke on that. I meant to in, waive the increase for this year. All righty. So I, I think I've, I've heard, um, since this is for discussion only, um, I've heard from uh, from the committee, and I will I will take all of that and turn it into a, a document for, um, for further discussion and possible action in the future. Okay. That sounds good. Seeing as we've exhausted the rest of the uh, agenda, next meeting date is December 29th. Um, everyone have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Oh, motion okay. by Betty, motion and uh, second by Marcus, I guess. And all those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.